Francisco. I know. <laughs> it says Francisco on your tag. So. Yeah, yeah, because then there is travel with the recipe <laughs> boys. <laughs> <laughs> I'm from the Belgian University of Madrid, and this is a joint work with uh, Aguilos Picarqui, Miguel uh, Diaz, Joaquin Mora, Emilia Gomez, and Paco Escobar. So this is uh, a proposal for an automatic detection uh, uh, system for lamentation in, in flamenco music. I'm going to, to say a few words about flamenco. You may not be familiar with that, that music. It uh, was mostly originated in Andalusia, uh, like a couple of hundred uh, uh, years ago. And it's a um, uh, kind of melting pot from many influences, uh, mainly Arab music, Jews, uh, Jews music, Byzantine music, Gypsy music, among, among others. Uh, one of the main uh, central characteristics of, of flamenco is singing, really. Voice is really, really, really important and it has a preeminent role in the music. Then guitar and, and dancing is also important, but they revolve around our voice. Uh, traditionally, uh, uh, in the musicology, literature, anthropology and sociology have studied uh, flamenco, but from a very other point of view. There are very little uh, research done on, from a systematic uh, musicology standpoint. Okay, um, a few general mm, musical features for you to understand what's going, what's going on, what goes next. First of all, improvisation and spontaneity play a central role. Improvisation is really important in, in flamenco up to the point that uh, a, a singer can sing the same uh, song twice in a row in a very different way. But underlying that, uh, uh, that uh, craze for improvisation, there is a very stable organization of, of, of the music in terms of meter, of uh, harmony, uh, etc. Right? So it's a very structured music on the, on the bottom on top of which uh, the singer or the dancer improvise uh, freely. Rhythmically, it's mostly a ternary music, right? Or uh, uh, some binary music, but it's like 10% uh, approximately. And also it's uh, modal music, being the Frisian mode, the most uh, common one, the most characteristic one. Frisian mode is the mode that started at E uh, in the piano. But also you have a major <coughs> and, and uh, um, a minor. And what we concerns us here is this uh, line. It's a very melismatic music, very very melismatic music. Here we can see the influence of uh, from the Arabs, <coughs> from the Jewish, from the Byzantine music, and also from the Gypsy music. So here we are studying melismas because are really, really, really important. Uh, we, we want to describe melismas in flamenco music. That's something that it hasn't been done by musicologists because, I, as I said, they haven't studied the anthropology of, uh, of flamenco, the history of flamenco, but not really the, the, the musical description of this uh, basic structure. Yes. I, of course, know exactly what you mean by melismas, but maybe you could define it for everybody else. <laughs> okay, absolutely, I'm sorry, sorry about that. A melisma is when uh, you have, uh, um, you associate a very, complica uh, very complicated melodic line to a single syllable, right? I'm going to play examples in, in 30 seconds, I'll do understand very well where it is. Okay. Where it is. Um, and also it's important because melismas are characteristic of certain singers. You can um, tell this singer, uh, tell apart this singer from this uh, one because of the, of, the, of the melisma. That hasn't been studied either. Also some melismas are peculiar to some flamenco style. So the study of melismas allows you to, to, uh, to study uh, style, class style classification. Um, also, the identification of melismas facilitates melodic analysis. I'll come back to this in, in, in a second, because it is very, very, very important. Um, so I'm going to, to, to play um, an example here. 
Uh, we are going to, to listen to this Debra, it's a flamenco cante, right? And here you have an approximate transcription of what you are going to, to hear. <coughs> same song, <coughs> exactly the same song by another singer. us uh, a measure of how difficult the problem is actually, right? Because in the previous example, from here to here was uh, a melisma, to here, maybe, right? I mean, this is a, <coughs> a, a, sc a score, a notation in Western uh, music. In this kind of music, which is uh, a cappella songs, you don't have meter. So forget about a strong beat and weak beat. Um, duration is not a criteria to distinguish the melisma notes because here we have this uh, triplets here, right? But at the end it's very slow. Here we have these uh, fifth note uh, figures. So all the typical classical music uh, description of melisma doesn't apply. And again, I insist, this piece is the same as this. Any flamenco aficionado will say, yes, it is the same, the same piece, but, but for our Western ears, it's very difficult to say that they are the same, right? So, for, for example, in a previous uh, work, we were doing uh, melodic analysis just by looking to, to the melodic, melodic direction. And it was really hard to, to make that, uh, you know, to carry out that kind of analysis because we had this massive in between. So, for example, here I can say the um, melodic skeleton of this piece is a fold that goes from this A here, a flat, then it goes to this G, it goes to this F, there is a cadence, it goes to this, this F again, and then it goes to this E. Everything in between, is, it is irrelevant from the melodic point of view, in terms of, of form, after the speaking, right? But in the middle days, many things, but uh, flamenco aficionado uh, thinks in terms of, uh, uh, they discard uh, melismas in, in, in their mind. The only thing that they have here is, okay, this, a four, right? So making uh, an important problem was to to identify melismas, right? So uh, we decided to well, again, there's no literature on flamenco melisma, so we we decided to make a table of ornaments, the most uh, common ones, right? Uh, here you have uh, the whole table, uh, this is the lower mordant, then we have a uh, lower mordant at a distance of, of a tone, then a lower mordant at a distance of half tone, <coughs> double lower mordant, lower trills with the, the two versions, upper mordant, that's what you reasonably describe as a table of, of ornaments, right? Um, we are also we use some uh, Gregorian chant to, to describe uh, the, the melodic uh, gesture, the melisma. That's that about those. So here we have a 28 a table uh, composed of 28 uh, ornaments. 
So now we want to to look for these ornaments in our in our corpus. We we compile a corpus of a cappella songs because of uh, the easiness of use because we wanted a monophonic uh, signal. Polyphonic, uh, we are working uh, on that now, but uh, in this work we are presenting is just uh, monophonic. So basically, we studied uh, three styles: Deblas, Martinete one, and Martinete two, which are important styles in, in, in flamenco music, especially in a cappella music. Uh, uh, at the beginning, we had many, many, many pieces, but uh, they were all either of bad quality or they were wrongly uh, tagged at the end, we came up with, um, we came up with uh, 72 cantes uh, songs, divided in 16 deblas, 36 Martinez de 1 and 20 Mar Martinez de 2 with enough variability to, to, uh, to our purpose. Yeah. So how to look for these um, uh, melismas? I, I want you to, to be uh, aware that here, what we have is a, a very simple thing like la, 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 in terms of like a MIDI file. But the realization could be completely crazy, as you have heard uh, in the musical examples. So we used uh, a tool by Emilia Gomez, SMS Tools, which provided a MIDI like representation of what you heard. It was really hard because, uh, first of all, we had the problems with the, with the tuning. If you pay close attention to, to the music, it was, many times it was out of tune. There was quarter of tones, thick quarters of tones all over. The vibrato was very uh, confusing sometimes because it wasn't clear if it was a trill or a, a, an actual vibrato. Um, so first, uh, we, we carry out a tuning frequency <coughs> estimation, then a short note transcription, and then an iterative note consolidation and tuning frequency re refinement. So when two notes were very short and they had approximately the same uh, frequency within certain boundaries, we could uh, consolidate that note as, as one. Uh, once we, we did that, we feed uh, the output of this uh, algorithm which is, as I said, a media-like representation to this uh, Smith-Waterman algorithm for load value sequence alignment. Uh, we had to introduce to do several parameters to control various aspects of the, of the, of the algorithm. So there was uh, this parameter, local similarity measure, to, to, to determine uh, from what level you accept your uh, your results, absolute difference of uh, musical musical intervals in order to control the, the tuning problems, uh, time duration between notes, and degree of time warping general uh, <coughs> uh, degree of time warping between the pattern and the detected instance. <coughs> so here we have a few. A few results when you uh, set a similarity threshold to 40, you allow this interval tolerance. You have these two parameters. Well, you get uh, only so low, lower turn was found twice <coughs> in Martinez 1, three times in Martinez 2, and uh, two in Devils. So here we carry out a style of those uh, ornaments in terms of each uh, <coughs> style. So let's see let's see some results here. So this is the oops. This is uh, the pattern, the, the defined uh, melisma. Right? It's just a MIDI, gives only three um, pitches. And the, the length is just like a, a global reference, right? And then that was a realization of, of this set here. But there's lots of vibrato, uh, right? Um, here we have 
that's not a melisma white because they are uh, same lyrics. And mm -hmm. no, doesn't, it doesn't work. Our system uh, doesn't, uh, it's not for the time being, it's not capable to, to distinguish that, but uh, this is like uh, the first step towards uh, a, a larger system and we want to use machine learning to, to teach the, the system to distinguish between real melodic gesture and, uh, and uh, real melismas. Here we have another one. You see also the, the timber characteristics are very, very confusing. It was using nationality. The same thing. Sometimes the realization is not, I mean, maybe this note is very short. This one is very, is very short too, and this one is very, very, very long. Right, you, you have all kinds of possibilities. The same. So to conclude, as our uh, our even still need more work on, on fine tuning, but uh, we are uh, incorporating uh, several uh, psychological facts in order to to, to get better uh, um, value for our parameters. The location of the ornaments was acceptable in general, but it has to be. It has to be <coughs> Enhanced because it is a very very hard problem. Um, discrimination between ornaments and melodies is still uh, an issue, um, and we have found several tendencies in, uh, in the use uh, of ornaments in certain studies. So, flamenco musicologists are very happy uh, about that. Okay, thanks a lot.